Good morning, lovely peoples. Hope you're all well on this uh, quite wet <laughs> and miserable morning. But we praise uh, the Lord for a new day and a new opportunity uh, to learn. And it is a present, so let's make uh, the most of it. This morning, we want to carry on on our talks on animals. And I want to talk about two animals this morning. And I've got a verse from the Bible that I kind of want to base our thoughts on. And we'll see what the Lord will teach us. We read in Psalm 22 and verse 21 the following. As David writes these interesting words. Save me from the lion's mouth and from the horns of the wild oxen. So I want to talk to you this morning about the ox and the lion. It's interesting as you read through the Bible and look at how they're mentioned, that they're roughly mentioned the same number of times each in the Bible, about 120 odd times each all together. So what are they like? What sort of creatures are they well the ox or plural oxen also known as a bullock i think in australia and in in india is a cow like creature and they're often described uh, as draft animals as in they can be easily uh, domesticated and generally are there's not many wild oxen these days uh, maybe a few still roaming uh, in South America, but they're generally used uh, for farming because of their immense strength uh, and power. And yet they can be the most humble uh, and docile of animals. In fact, uh, it's said that they were first domesticated about 4,000 years ago, which is quite interesting because when we look at the the Bible timeline and the events in the same time period, then we're looking at the age of Abraham. And one of the things that Abraham was famous for was the amount of oxen he had, which depicted his stature uh, and his wealth in the community that he lived. They were very important, as I've mentioned, as farming animals. Uh, but also, uh, they were protected as a result. And there are many laws in the Bible concerning uh, oxen, should one die, should one be killed, etc. But I won't bore you with that this morning. Have a look at it in Exodus and Leviticus and you'll find uh, that information there. But there were sacrificial animals as well. Often uh, very important sacrifices involved multitude uh, of oxen in the ceremony. And yet we know that the psalmist would write in Psalm 69 verse 30 and 31. I will praise the name of God with a song and will magnify him with thanksgiving. This also shall please the Lord better than an ox or bull, which has horns and hoofs. The humble shall see this and be glad, and you who seek God, your hearts shall live. Job, again, many animals in the book of Job and comparison made. Job talks uh, about the difficulties of wild oxen. The Proverbs, the writer says, where no oxen are, the trough is clean, but much increase comes by the strength of an ox. And then there are a couple of verses in Isaiah which talk about uh, oxen, especially concerning the coming of the Lord Jesus and that idyllic state in which the Lord Jesus reigns and all is at peace. When he says the cow and the bear shall graze, their young ones shall lie down together and the lion 
shall eat straw like the ox. That ties us in with our lion. So let's look at the lion. The lion, Panthera leo, as the Latin says. It's a species of the cat family. It's muscular, deep-chested, uh, with a short, rounded head, a reduced neck and round ears, and a hairy tuft at the end of its tail. It's one of few animals that are described as sexually dimorphic, i.e. the male is quite easily recognisable compared with the females. And that's due to its prominent mane, the most recognisable feature of the species. And it's probably fair to say one of the most uh, widely recognised animal symbols in human culture. The lion has been extensively depicted in sculptures and paintings on national flags and quite a lot in contemporary films and literature. And again, like the ox, it appears throughout the Bible. Judah is described as the tribe of the lion. When we think of a lion and we look at the scriptures, these sort of things are associated with it. Wild, untamable. To defeat one uh, was seen as heroic. So Samson, with the power of the Holy Spirit within him, defeated one quite easily one day, which led to a riddle. I'll let you look that up in the book of Judges. But David, the shepherd boy, he managed to kill a bear and a lion, which gave him a lot of credence with the Israelites when it came to making him king. It was synonymous with fit, fitness and healthiness and strength. Saul and Jonathan were both described as stronger than lions. Again, in Proverbs, they talk about the wicked fleeing when no one pursues, but the righteous are bold as a lion. It talks about a lion which is mighty among beasts. It's probably where we get that phrase, the king of the jungle. But I think if tigers had have been in the Middle East, I'm sure they'd have got that title. But that's just a personal thought and a bias towards my love of tigers. The wrath of a king is like a roaring lion. It's a kingly, uh, majestic animal. And yet it's deadly. It's fearsome. Job again says, If my head is exalted, you hunt me like a fierce lion. And again, you show yourself awesome against me. The psalmist again, in fear, talking about his enemies, talks about lest they tear me like a lion, rending me in pieces while there is none to deliver. So the ox and the lion, they appear throughout the Bible. So let's go back to our text. Save me from the lion's mouth and from the horns of the wild oxen. It's interesting, they're words of David in Psalm 22, and yet they're prophetic words concerning the Lord Jesus as he hung upon the cross and was taken and truly, cruelly treated and hung upon Calvary's cross. And yet the irony is, is quite amazing. Because we read this strange verse in Ezekiel and the images repeated in Revelation. As for the likeness of their faces, each had the face of a man. Each of the four had the face of a lion on the right side. Each of the four had the face of an ox on the left side. And each of the four had a face of an eagle. These weird creatures depicted in Ezekiel and Revelation, as been well said, represent the four 
great characteristics of Jesus Christ as depicted in the Gospels. Matthew, he is the lion of the tribe of Judah, the king of the Jews. In Mark, he's depicted as the ox, that humble servant. In Luke, the man, the son of man. And then in John, that magnificent bird, the eagle, the son of God, divine. And so we see this wonderful harmony, don't we, in Christ as we think of that lion in all its majesty and that ox in humility. The king of the Jews, the king of creation, the king of this world came into it and like an ox, in all humility, humbled himself, became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. What a wonderful saviour we have. And may the God help us to appreciate his many facets. So today, rejoice, because God has more pleasure in that than in sacrifices but if you're a christian today remember be as bold as a lion because we can be in the glorious victory that christ has won on the cross by faith in him but may the lord help us to be like the ox this day and in humility and servitude help those in need and be of kindness to someone this day the lord bless you happy animal spotting although it might be difficult in this wet weather maybe get on youtube or on tinternet and find some amazing pictures of animals found in the bible let's pray lord bless us this day help us to rest in you if we're a christian lord help us to be bold as lions because the righteous in christ can be but help us to be as humble as the ox grant us that strength that it has to do your will so lord once again keep us this safe bless us bless our families protect care for them watch over them and keep them well because we pray these things in jesus name amen god bless you